DJ right now at Clemson. Um, that's probably the most egregious thing I've seen. And I love Dabo, and, and I'll probably get a phone call. Um, DJ's gotten worse. It was the uh, site of Saturday's Outkick the Tailgate. We were here, jam-packed guest list. You can find the show online. Just search out uh, Outkick the Tailgate on YouTube. One of our guests was Lipscomb Academy head coach, former NFL quarterback and ESPN analyst Trent Dilfer. And uh, we, we got into a variety of topics. One of those was quarterback development, where he says it doesn't always correlate to great coaching from high school to the college level. And Chad then asked this follow-up question. Is there a specific example that you think of when, you, when you talk about this right names. now? I don't want that to you, That you, see, you saw a player at Elite <laughs> 11 and say, man, I wish you would have gone somewhere what, what's different. What's going on with DJ right now at Clemson? Um, that's probably the most egregious thing I've seen. And I love Dabo, and, and I'll probably get a phone call. Um, DJ's gotten worse. And that, that was DJ's a shock. Got, but that was shocking this, when you go from Trevor Lawrence to him and you're thinking you're going to keep it right second, on going, right? Trevor got worse mechanically. Trevor has completely changed from the time he left Clemson to what he is now in Jacksonville. Completely re, retooling. Now he's so... For the better? Oh, in yeah. In Jacksonville? Yes, much better. He's, he's so talented and they were rolling so much that he got away with being sloppy. He'd be the first to tell you, get Trevor on the show. Say, what? as you went to the pre-draft process and you looked at yourself at Clemson and now you see yourself now, what are the differences? You go, oh my gosh, it's night and day. He's like, I had no idea this is what was happening to me. So, and it's, again, I don't want, I don't even know who the quarterback coach is at Clemson. I couldn't tell you his name. It's not his job, right? But colleges need to do a better job of understanding it's a craft. There's Trent Dilfer from Saturday's Outkick, the tailgate. Paul, this is the first time you've heard that. Yeah, we'll just get Trevor on the show. He'll clarify it right up. <laughs> Trent, Trent uh, really give us a lot of credit for our power. I mean, that is some strong stuff. Good job by you guys. And Chad, good job with the follow-up question there that got him going on to Trevor Lawrence. I mean, this is not just a high school coach, obviously, coming out. This is a guy who's worked with talented, talented high school kids that gives him the basis for what he's saying and who's won a Super Bowl. And then a value, you know, so played with Hall of Famers, understands what NFL quarterback people are asking NFL quarterbacks to do, and then evaluated quarterbacks as a top flight analyst at and ESPN runs, for years. Runs the years. most popular he's, quarterback camp of the offseason. Yeah, he's got absolutely the resume to say what he said. A lot of people are going to say uh, Trent Dilfer was a failed NFL quarterback and dismiss his credence to say that. He's got the platform absolutely to say that. Well, he knows DJ, too, the quarterback at Clemson, because he worked with him at Elite 11. So when he's saying that, he's coming from right. a reference point of having worked with the Clemson quarterback in high school and working with all these these top quarterbacks. That's why I was fascinated to get his answer, because he started going down that path of not every college program is equipped to fully teach the totality of the quarterback position. And I was surprised to hear that Clemson, you know, one of the best football programs in the country currently uh, is one that does a poor job with it. And then you see the drop off offensively from Trevor Lawrence uh, to DJ now as the quarterback, but not, not just that him saying Trevor Lawrence got worse. He Tre said, Trevor I, was also an elite 11 quarterback. Well, and he yeah. said, I don't know uh, who the quarterback coach is. It's Brandon Streeter. And I went and looked this up immediately after the show. Cause I didn't know either. He's been there since 2014. He's a former Clemson quarterback. Um, but that is quite the indictment on Brandon Streeter and Tony Elliott, who had a lot of opportunities to leave Clemson this offseason. Tennessee went after him. Some others interviewed him for head coaching jobs, and maybe he wants to take over for Dabo Sweeney one day. I don't know. Uh, but this is not the hottest time for Tony Elliott, offensive coordinator at Clemson, given that they're the biggest disappointment in college football. What I want to know is where are the three places Trent Dilfer would be advising elite 11 guys if they asked him to go where the, where the process goes in the opposite direction and you're getting better footwork every year and you're more and more prepared to walk into a Jacksonville situation and be prepared to take on what they're adding instead of them having to reconstruct your footwork after you got worse during college and, and, and we're good anyway instead of despite some, some deficiencies in your game that got worse during your time there. That would be my next question for Dilfer. 
uh, and what he's telling these kids who probably some well, of which want his advice. You can go and watch the full interview, Paul, and he's going to tell you Alex Golish is one of those uh, coaches that uh, he really respects. He's the offensive coordinator for the University of Tennessee currently. Um, and well, another example would be, would be Lane Kiffin, uh, who yep. he gave a shout out to on the show on Saturday. Uh, there, there are plenty of examples. And I, I forgot what really got him going down that path, Chad of discussing uh, quarterback development and how sometimes it's not always on the kid that he coaches in the lead 11 that goes on to the quarterback level. Uh, but it, he was he was discussing how th- this is not just a Clemson issue. This is a college football coaching issue for that position and the well, development for the next level. Here's what I, who I was thinking of the whole time I asked the question was Jarrett Garantano, who was an elite 11 quarterback who he loved. Yeah. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I asked a two-part question on – who was a guy that you were certain was going to be great that no one believed in that left your camp and went on and did big things and you believed in him to begin with and not many coaches did? And who's the opposite end of that? A guy who went somewhere who you knew had the, the, the tools to do it but yeah. got to a school and they weren't harnessed the right way and he immediately uh, went to Clemson with that. Also interesting, his answer on, uh, he was talking about Clark Lee at Vanderbilt and Josh Heupel at Tennessee and said, they're both selling the same thing. It's all about culture. It's all about fit. It's all about family. With the, it's, it's a very similar message from both programs, which I found interesting. UT should use that in recruiting, but who's thinking Trevor Lawrence was bad when he's the number one pick? Didn't look like a problem. Well, 